Hello everyone, welcome back to a, another tutorial. Today is a more of a loose, misty mountain forest landscape with some snow. Colors I'm using today are by Daniel Smith and it's going to be two colors and it's a mix of deep sap green and lunar black. So I'm showing you the colors here and when you mix them, uh, this is what it looks like. So of course I'll be using light and dark values just by adding more water to my brush. And then for the mountain, I am using Payne's Gray, but it's going to be much lighter than this uh, color that I'm laying down. And you can't see it, but I'm also using Dr. Martin's uh, Bleed Proof White. And I wanted to show you how I do my trees. So I do mist my paper and then using my favorite brush, which is the Velvet Touch Long Round, doesn't matter what size, though I'm using a size six here. And I just wiggle my brush across the page. And I have a bit more of a dry brush texture going on here. And then I also drop in a little bit more uh, wet paint to spread it out a little bit and I just have the bristles dance across the page so very um, simple once you get used to it but the more you do trees the more you'll find your style and the type of tree that you enjoy I would say this tree is not so much a loose tree it has a bit more details and texture which I prefer but I will show you how I do loose trees as far as the background goes for this painting and if you hear my heater it will be going on and off so my apologies for the distracting noise <laughs> but we're still in winter now I did want to lay down a couple more trees and then to show you how I use the white for the snow now it's a bit thicker paint and um, it's perfect for laying down some white paint. You could use gouache. I don't tend to use gouache uh, for my snow. I don't know why. I just don't. I really like um, this bleed proof white, which it's quite opaque. And I do water it down a little bit and then I do dry off my brush just because I don't want it to spread like crazy. So I laid down a couple more trees and I thought it might be kind of fun using my sketchbook and showing you the image or the painting on the right, but then um, going over the details first on the left hand side of the page. So that's what I'm doing here. <coughs> And I do take my uh, branches uh, all the way to the bottom typically and I do that mainly because I paint a lot of misty scenes so I like to fade the bottoms out but of course if you want to do some trunks then by all means so here is my bleed proof white and taking one of my detail brushes uh, by gravy doesn't matter what brush you have and you saw that I touched the paper towel and now I am dancing those bristles across the page. As far as laying it down, I am working uh, with those branches instead of just globbing it on and it's also a bit lighter and that's because I want it to fade with the tree and look a bit more natural. All right, so taking my paints gray here, and I am just laying down a very, very wet mountain. Now, I always do misty scenes, so I soften that paint by going back over it with my brush. Now, I am using a Neptune brush here. Now, I tend to do Neptune brushes for mistier mountains as far as no... Uh, dry brush texture because it holds a lot of water but I do find that it will lift the paint up dramatically as well just because those bristles uh, are so soft and they are very flexible so I have to have a lighter grip on my brush I am creating a little bit of texture here with the lifting of the paint as you can see there are um, 
some lighter areas and some darker areas and then I just add a bit more water just to fade it down but this mountain will dry a little bit lighter and if I'm honest I do wish I had the mountain a bit darker but you know it's how it goes <laughs> um, and now I am laying in my background trees and this is where that more of a loose landscape comes in and I'm taking the side of my brush and I'm just swooping the paint up still using my Neptune brush here now you don't need all of these brushes of course but the longer you paint uh, the more you will probably test out brushes and it does seem to be a problem with the art community where we love watercolor brushes or paint brushes we just love the brushes <laughs> So I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if it's so much a problem, but we tend to do that. Or at least I do. I can't speak for everybody. Um, but yes, uh, sticking with that Neptune brush and um, making some lines. And those are just uh, meant to be trees in the distance. And then, of course, uh, continuing that along the page. As far as composition here, I just wanted to get some background trees, but then I will take trees and put them closer, uh, lar well, I will make them larger to make them appear closer, and then I will make some smaller to make them appear in the distance. So doing my first set of trees here, the same way I demonstrated at the start of the video, and of course using that um, lunar black mixed with deep sap green. If you want to add a bit more dimension to your tree, you can go ahead and just drop in some darker values of paint to give some contrast. Now my paint was a bit on the wetter side here. I had a bit more water in my brush and I should let you know for my trees, I went back to using my Velvet Touch Long Rounds. And there I am adding a bit more um, uh, depth to the trees by just dropping in some darker paint. And I really love the Velvet Touch because it has such a fine point so I can get those tiny details. And I tend to work Kind of all over the page uh, because I want to see the how the composition is going to work. I don't tend to sketch out my paintings beforehand, though I'm sure that would be easy, <laughs> easier to get an idea. But I am impatient. I just want to dive in. So, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But you can see that I just let the bristles dance and they make these really fun shapes and I love these trees, I love these style of trees. Uh, they do remind me of the trees that you'd find in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Uh, have you ever been there? Let me know. Are you from there? Um, yes, I just, I just love these trees. Now, as far as creating shadows, you could take some paints gray, you could take, um, you know, blues, or you could take some purples. Uh, as far as shadows, I decided to stick with just the green, just for some fun. And um, yeah, I just added a little bit of water to my brush and just dragged the paint from the base of the tree down, making it very soft. And then to make the trees lighter, I just add a bit more water to my brush, dab it with paper towel, and then I'm ready to go. And you also saw that I am spritzing my paper because I'm always doing that because I want the those branches to feather out. Now I am using the Etcher Lab uh, sketchbook today. I have never used uh, a sketchbook before. I don't know why. I tend to just uh, usually paint paintings um, uh, just from uh, some uh, arches cold pressed watercolor paper. That's what I usually always use when it comes to landscapes. So I am quite pleased and quite happy with the Etcher Lab. I am actually quite shocked <laughs> because I do my paintings with a ton of water. I use mostly water uh, for my landscapes and 
that might sound quite silly because it's watercolor of course you use water but I mean because I do misty scenes I add a tremendous amount of water to my paintings and this has been holding up quite nice going back in with those loose style of distant trees you can see that mountain has faded and it's very very pale in the background and I'm just dragging some of that paint down and I thought this turned out quite nice I don't typically paint this way as far as having um, those loose uh, trees but it's really quite beautiful and I think if you were to add some other colors maybe some different greens in there maybe even some blues or if you if you like purples um, you can add that in there and yeah it's it's quite fun you can have a lot of fun with this so it's been really nice doing YouTube because it is making me uh, want to uh, experience painting and thinking about painting in different ways versus how I normally paint so it's it's been really nice and challenging to do that and then of course share so but there's so many ways to paint really and that is the beauty of painting and then also the beauty of YouTube is you're going to find so many different styles now I call this more of a loose landscape but that's because this is loose to me but if you see other loose landscapes you'll see that they're very loose um, so really you know you you get so many different perspectives and that's what's so much uh, fun about um, art and creating is that it's you get to be the boss and the creator of your your art so you can see I am now adding in the white paint and I do it ever so lightly because I do want that softer uh, look now if you were to glob on some white paint or have it be very opaque it would be very dramatic and I do think that that looks quite nice but because these trees are a bit softer I really love that faded soft white because it looks mm, I'm not really sure how to describe it as far as it just it looks a bit more natural and soft and dreamy maybe that's how I describe it it looks a bit more dreamy and I really like that The brush that I'm using to lay this down is just one of the detail brushes from my Gravy watercolor brush set and they come in a pack of 11 I believe and I just found it on Amazon it's I believe $17 but I use them all the time and these are the brushes that I always use for my mountains. I think the more skilled you get at painting, uh, the more you're able to master uh, any watercolor brush uh, to use for anything. But for me, I tend to stick to brushes that I know that I can um, use for different uh, parts of my landscape. So I know that I'm gonna be able to get the effects that I want using the gravy brushes. And I know I'm going to be able to get my the pine trees that I want using my um, velvet touch brushes. But I'm sure the more skilled you get, it doesn't matter <laughs> the brushes. Okay, so I am laying down some uh, snow now, and there's two ways you can do it. You can do what I'm doing here, which is taking your paint and smacking it against a brush and making tiny little droplets. But you might get white paint all over the place or you can do this way which is actually the way I prefer and it's really great if you want to get clusters so if you were doing a space uh, landscape this would be great for stars but I take my deer foot brush here uh, synthetic of course um, and I just uh, take my finger and I 
sprinkle it across the page. Now you cannot really see the white here, but that's okay. You can see it gently sprinkled in the trees. I decided that the top part here, uh, I, did, I wanted a sky. I tend to forget to do skies. I like that very, I guess, Nordic modern style of art. And usually it's very faded white at the top and then goes into re dip, uh, deep, rich colors. But I wanted some sky here, so I took some light values of the Payne's Gray and smushed it across my page. So that's what I'm doing here. And to soften those edges, I added a bit more water and just moved it around a little bit, being careful not to touch the uh, top of that mountain because I didn't really want a glazing effect. But that is it. Very simple, I think very um, easy for anyone starting out and what a fun way to start my first uh, sketchbook. Let me know, do you guys use sketchbooks? Uh, is that something that you enjoy? Um, I've never really been interested in sketchbooks. I don't know why, but very happy using this. I should let you know though that the tape tore the page a little bit, so <sighs> must be mindful of that. But I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. I hope it was really simple and enjoyable to watch. Let me know what you think and comment below and be sure to like and subscribe if you find value in my content. All right, until next time. Bye, my friends.